to the can. I want to hold the can. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Amen. Christ is in our midst. He is and ever shall be. I greet you at the feast of the presentation of the Lord in the temple. This is really the conclusion of the, the nativity season, cycle. Um, we started with a long season of preparation for nativity. Fasting. Anticipating. Remembering what a longing humanity has. What are we longing for? What are we long longing for? What are we waiting for? Christ. Christ came. Christ was re revealed. It's the fulfillment of all of our longing. Humbly. Full of love. And the veil between heaven and earth was torn. In that little child, God was revealed as having become man, the person of our Lord, to make himself what we are, so that we could become what he is. Then we celebrated the Feast of Theophany, the baptism of the Lord to fulfill all righteousness and to sanctify the waters, to reclaim creation as his own. And we heard the beautiful exhortation, Repent, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then we talked about what the kingdom of heaven is. And I asked you, do you ascribe kingship to God? Do we ascribe kingship to Him? Then we are members of His kingdom if we do. The kingdom is where kingship is given, ascribed, understood as being God. And here we are on the 40th day after his birth, celebrating the feast of his entrance into the temple. On this day, to fulfill the law again. See, in his humility, the, the lawgiver doesn't surmount or surpass the law, but actually fulfills and abides by it in his true humility. <laughs> fulfills the law by being presented to the temple on the 40th day by his parents and as the, the most famous story goes Mary and Joseph bring him to the temple Simeon that righteous old man the, whom the spirit of God had told you will not die before you behold the Savior he discerned by the Holy Spirit on that day that the Savior was to enter the temple. Simeon went there to receive him. And he said those beautiful words, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to light in the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And so today is a piece of light. A piece of light. And there are so many things going through my mind today. The overwhelming joy and fullness in what seems like it could be kind of a funny little piece. Like, okay, you go take your kids to church. Well, that's a good lesson for us that we bring our children to church. I mean, present them to the Lord. Priority. If you love your kids, bring them, dedicate them. Christ. Offer them to Him. To His love. To His service. And don't be afraid. Some of them might completely dedicate their lives to God. Some of them might even become monastics. Who knows? But we want to offer our children to God. That's one of the beautiful themes of this day. I love Simeon so much. You may know that he's my original patron. Do you remember that? Yes, I know. I have, I had two names. I had one name and then I had two names because the bishop has his ways. 
But I, when I was received into the church, I was given the name Simeon. From Simeon, St. Simeon, whom we call the righteous or the God receiver. And I love him very much because he waited for God. He trusted in God and he waited for him. And he did something that, that I, he experienced something that I like to call the privilege of waiting on God. The privilege of waiting on God. I get to wait for him to do what he's going to do. And then, if I have waited for him faithfully, then I'll know what to do. In Simeon's case, he had been living in this world full of sorrow and longing for so, so much time that he, he said, relieve me of this burden of the flesh for now. Another thing I like to think about is that he, he didn't go straight to heaven because Christ hadn't trampled down death by death. So what was Simeon doing down there? And was he bearing witness as well? And then, after the resurrection, after the, the crucifixion, I picture Christ going down and saying, Enter into your true rest now, to Simeon. I love seeing Simeon. There's not much about him, but his silence speaks volumes. And his understanding of the sufficiency of God. This moment of receiving you into my arms is enough. That's enough. Let me depart in peace. That's how I feel after I receive the Eucharist every time. You ever experienced that? Think about that. Okay. I love Simeon. I ask for his intercessions. I think he's a fervent intercessor. A light to light the Gentiles. That's a beautiful phrase. Well, there was, in that time, a real distinction between those who were in and those who were out. But Christ came to tear apart the wall of division. And I think we also have to be careful not to allow a wall of division to enter within ourselves. Who did God come to save? Me, of course. But also my neighbor. He loves me, and he also loves you. And I have to understand that in order to understand his love for me, that he might come to save me. He came to save all the nations, all the people. And so then, as Christians who have been illumined by the light of Christ, our calling is to let our light shine indiscriminately. Who will I love and who will I not love? That is not a Christian distinction. So as we seek to let our light shine in the world that we live in, let us be aware of our discrimination. Who do I like to be nice to and who do I withhold attention from? Whew. God help me. God help me to let my light shine even when I don't want to. Why do I struggle to let it shine in certain places and in certain relationships? Usually because of fear and pride. Usually because there's something that this flame of the light of Christ needs to burn away in my life. What is it that needs to burn away of your life? That I can be a light to the world that I live in. And I'm not just saying like, it's your job to illumine the entire universe. That's the church's job. But I'm saying it's your job to bring light to your sphere, your mission field, your family, your workplace. Let your light shine. My challenge to you this week is to ask yourself throughout the week, am I really, am I letting my light shine? And let that question convict you. I've shared this thought a couple times, but I love it so much. 
Light a candle, do not curse the darkness. You ever heard that? How easy is it, 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 is it for us to become victims of the fallenness of the world that we live in? And to hate the world and to ju juxtapose ourselves with the world. We want something better than what the world has to offer. Yes, but that doesn't make us better. See, the world is still longing for His Savior. And if you claim to know Him, you have something to offer. It may not be the perfect words. It may not be the greatest moral integrity. We can work on that together. It may not be consistency in prayer. But if you believe and you long for Him to complete His work in you, then He has something good to work with. Your light can shine. I'll end with this thought. There is a very strong Eucharistic theme in this feast. While this is a feast of light, we are going to do the blessing of the candles. I don't think we've ever done that before at St. Paul. But on this day, there is a tradition of blessing candles and distributing them, distributing them to the people. And I want those prayers of the blessing of the candles to minister to you. So at the conclusion of the liturgy, when we bless the candles, listen to the words and ask, what does this say about me? What do these prayers have to say to me? Listen to them. Listen to them. Because then at the end of the service, when you come through, I'm going to hand you a candle and I'm going to say, let your light shine. Let your light shine. And you can take that candle and you can burn it. There are more candles. You can use it at home as a reminder. <coughs> of the light of Christ that illumines you and that calls you forth to be alive. The Eucharistic theme that I want to talk about though is this. Last night, you know we have prayer meetings every Saturday evening here in St. Paul? Prayer meetings, they're called vestors. It's beautiful. We pray for the entire world. We intercede for the world, especially on the eves of feast days. A feast of the Church is a manifestation of the grace of God, and we try to channel that grace of God to this world that we live in that needs the light of Christ. So, we had a beautiful, not, not a lot of people came, but it was, I just wanted to remind you, you have prayer meetings on night on Saturday evening. It was lovely. We read the Old Testament readings. If you miss the, the, the great vespers for feast days, you also miss the, you miss the Old Testament readings that bear witness to the meaning of the feast and have the prophecies and things. And we heard Isaiah 6, where the angel brought forth the coal to touch Isaiah's lips, and he said, Lo, I'm the man of unclean lips. And the coal touched him and cleansed him. And he was sent by the Lord. Well, we see a fulfillment of that in today. The tongs holding the coal, the Theotokos. The coal, Christ himself. The recipient, those who are waiting on the Lord, Simeon. And you and I are Simeon. When we receive the holy mysteries, we are people of unclean lips, but we pray that He would cleanse us. And then, like Isaiah, we say, "Send me, Lord, send me, send me." The message of today's feast is plentiful, full. There's so much, but what I want you to hear is. Be alone. Approach and receive the holy mysteries. Yes, you are people of unclean lips. So be it. Let him cleanse you by the fire, fiery grace of his love for you. I've been emphasizing prepare for communion. Say the prayers in preparation. Understand with what great humility and fear, but also joy and privilege we approach the holy mysteries. And then allow your flame to be kindled by the reception 
of the Holy Ministries, then you'll understand the beautiful saying of Simeon, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace. Depart from worldly cares. And whether I'm alive or dead doesn't matter, it's in your will. A joyous peace to you all. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen.